Today's lecture, we will discuss the formation of twins in the embryological development. And today, we will specifically be discussing monozygotic or identical twins. Now, just like in regular embryological development, when an egg is released from an ovary and is released into the ampulla of the fallopian tube, it is normally fertilized by a single sperm cell and continues down the fallopian tube where it eventually becomes a morula, a blastocyst, and then gets embedded and implants in the endometrial lining. Now, for monozygotic twins, there is still only one egg which is ejected from the ovary. However, at some point in the process, while it is coming through the fallopian tubes and uh, about to get implanted, at some point this egg will split. Depending on what stage of development the egg splits will depend on how independent the twins can be. The sooner that the egg decides to split, the more independent these twins will become. Now, these splitting can occur in different stages. It can occur in the two-stage development, typically between days one and three, the early blastocyst stage between days four and seven, the implanted blastocyst stage between days 8 and 12, and already in a blastocyst with a formed embryologic disc between days 13, 15, and on. Like I said, the earlier that the splitting occurs, the more independent the twins will become. So in the two-cell stage, we can see that the twins will tend to have two chorion, two amnion, and two placentae. In the blastocyst stage, they become more dependent on one another, having only one chorion, two separate amniotic sacs, and also sharing a placenta. In the implanted blastocyst stage, they are mostly dependent on one another with one chorion sharing an amnion as well as one placenta. And if the cleavage of the egg doesn't happen until 13 days or later in the formed embryonic disc stage, this is where you tend to have conjoined twins and a complete lack of independence. And these are the basics of the formation of twins in embryonic development.